In this video, we talk about soy, hormones, and male infertility. We talk about soy versus animal protein and cancer. We talk about GMO soy, why our women should eat soy products, and what are the healthiest soy products. Stay tuned. There is a very common myth that soy foods and the phytoestrogens in soy foods cause male infertility. And that's not actually right. One of the reasons for this myth to exist is that a study found that the people that ate the most amount of soy had the lowest concentration of sperm. And yes, although they had the lowest concentration of sperm, that didn't happen by lowering the sperm count, but by increasing the total volume of the ejaculation. So it's not that soy decreases the sperm count, but that it increases the overall volume of sperm. Another reason for this myth to persist is that there was this case in Australia, in male sheep, where a lot of male sheep got infertility problems. And they studied it, and it was because of the amount of soy that they were eating. But for a male, for a human male, to be eating that amount of soy, we would need to eat 1,000 liters of soy milk a day, 360 kilos of tofu, or 8,600 soy burgers. That's a lot of food and it's basically impossible to get in. However, there is record of two cases in humans uh, that ate too much soy and they were eating anywhere between 14 and 20 doses a day, which is already a huge value right there. Besides that, soy does not increase any feminine characteristics in men. What already has an effect on men estrogens is a phytoestrogen called HPN to short that is the most powerful one found to date. It's 50 times more powerful than the phytoestrogen found in soy and when you combine it with another phytoestrogen called exocet to short, they can indeed affect the levels of male estrogen. And where can you find these two? They are found in hops that are used to make beers. So yes, beer can affect the estrogen levels of a male. In reality, the estrogens of soy work in two different ways, which is kind of odd because it doesn't usually work that way, but they have an anti-estrogenic effect on some tissues and a pro-estrogenic effect on other tissues. They have a pro-estrogenic effect on some tissues like bones by protecting fractures and they have an anti-estrogenic effect on other tissues like breast to reduce breast cancer. So they work both ways because of the different receptors that we have, the beta and the alpha ones. Soy has also been shown to increase bone density and to decrease the probability of fracture. So it's also good for bone health. Okay, now let's take a look of soy versus animal protein and cancer. First, let's look at the amino acid profile and the bioavailability of soy. Soy is what we call a complete protein. It has halved amino acids and is highly, highly available. While animal protein increases the levels of cancer-promoting growth hormone IGF-1, uh, most plant proteins seem to bring the levels of this hormone down. Soy protein, however, seems to have no effect on IGF-1 levels. So it doesn't increase the levels of IGF-1 or decrease. We already know that the blood of someone on a 100% vegetable diet is up to 8 times more powerful to fight cancer than the regular blood. The changes can be so dramatic, in fact, that it can impact our own genes. When it comes to supplements, soy protein supplements have the exact same absorption rate as the milk proteins or whey powder, so that's exactly the same. And that's actually the dark side of soy, the isolated soy, because isolated soy has been shown to increase IGF levels as much as the milk protein. One scoop, however, seems to be completely, completely fine. So how much soy is too much soy? There's this study that was done with three different groups, one meat eaters, one vegans, and another one with vegans eating anywhere between 7 and 18 doses of soy products a day. What they found is that the level of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, is the same in the people that eat meat and the people that ate the 7 to 18 doses of soy a day. But the group with the lowest levels of IGF-1 was a group of vegans that didn't eat that much soy. 
Although the IGF-1 levels of the meat eating group and the vegans eating between 7 and 18 doses a day was the same, the group of vegans seemed to have a lower probability of getting cancer. So anywhere between 3 to 5 doses of soy a day is known to be safe. No studies have ever found problems with people eating between this range. They have found problems with people eating up to 7, uh, so I recommend you to stay between 3 to 5 max. Now, what about GMO soy? Apparently the problem with GMO soy is not the soy itself, but the reason why it is GMO. It's because it can resist to a very famous pesticide made by Monsanto called Roundup that has glyphosate in it. And if the soy is GMO, you can spray the Roundup directly into the crops and it's way way easier because you can spray the whole field at once and you don't have to care about where it lands because the soy will resist and everything else will die. Here's a table of the quantity of glyphosate in GMO soy, organic soy and regular soy that got sprayed on the soil instead of directly on the crops. As you can see the only one that shows some residues of the pesticide is the GMO soy. And how big are these levels? They are 2000% above the legal limit. 2000%. So what did Monsanto do when they found out about these levels? Well, they could have reduced the amount of pesticides sprayed or they could change the legal limit. And that's what they did. They changed it from 0.1 milligrams a kilo to 20 milligrams a kilo. So the question is not, is GMO soy safe? Is, is Roundup the pesticide safe? Well, one study done by Monsanto with glyphosate found that yes, it was totally, totally safe. In spite of that, they did another study, and this time with Roundup, not just glyphosate, but with Roundup that has a lot of other chemicals to increase the power of the pesticide, and yes, with the Roundup, with the pesticide itself, they found that it was 120 five times more powerful than the regular glyphosate. So yes, in here it can affect human health and that is why you should avoid or at least limit the amount of GMO soy you consume. Now let's see why every woman should eat soy products. So nowadays girls menstruate really early. 100 years ago they usually menstruated for the first time at 16 and now it's more like 11 or 12 and this is a problem. This study found that the reason for this to happen is actually animal protein and meat. They also discovered that the reason why vegetarian girls that were vegetarians since birth develop a little bit later or at the right time was actually because they were eating soy products. And this is actually really important, the age at which a girl has her first menstruation because the later she has it, the more unlikely she is to have breast cancer. It's actually estimated that by each year you can delay your menstruation, you are 7% less likely to have breast cancer. Again, no effects were found in puberty in men and the consumption of soy. The consumption of soy is also directly linked to the prevention and treatment of breast cancer. It also seems to reduce the symptoms of menopause. Ok, now that we've seen the health consequences of eating soy, what are the best sources of soy? What are the healthiest ones? The most common ones are the textured soy protein, tofu, tempeh and edamame beans. Edamame beans are green soy beans. Edamame beans seem to be healthier than tofu, of course, because it's a whole food, it's green soybeans, but tempeh is even healthier than edamame beans. It's even healthier because tempeh is fermented. And the fermentation process actually adds nutrients to it. So there you go, that's the healthiest source of soy that you can get. Another curiosity about soy and something that I found while I was researching this video is soy is actually great to slim your waist and to make you lose weight. A study was done with people eating the same amount of calories, everything was the same, but one group was having whey protein, milk protein, and the other group was having soy protein. What they found is that the group that was having soy protein didn't gain any weight, but they actually lost weight and they lost waist size. Because it appears that soy actually blocks 
your fat cells from absorbing fat which is actually really really great and I would like to look more into this because it seems really interesting and that's it for the video guys, hopefully this was very very informative, hopefully you learned a lot, I answered all your doubts, if I didn't answer all your doubts, please leave them on the comments down below, I will research it, I will do my best to answer all of you, thank you so much for watching this video, if you thought the video was informative, if you made it till the end of the video, leave a like to support the channel, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, hit the notification bell, that's super super important, tell me which topic should I discuss next? And I will be seeing you all in the next one. Peace.